Okay. So first of all, the easiest way to find the limit using a table, again, we're going to use our calculator. So again, what we're going to do, I want to find the limit as x approaches 3 from the right. Now remember, when I say from the right, we're looking at x values slightly larger than 3. Because on the graph, when I go to the right of 3, I'm looking at x values that are slightly larger than 3. So when I say from the right, we're actually talking about x values that are slightly larger. So when I look at my table that I filled out, notice all of these x values are larger than 3. They're very close to 3, but they're not equal to 3. Again, that's what you need to remember about a limit. We're talking about x values really, really close to a particular number, but unequal to it. All right, so what we're going to do to fill out my table I'm going to go to my y equals, and I'm going to type this function in, the square root of x minus 3 plus 1. And make sure that plus 1 is not under the radical when you type it in. Now, when you go to your table of values on the calculator, so when you go to second graph, the setting that your calculator is set on, notice you do not have any decimals under your x column. Notice I want to fill out a bunch of um, decimals for 3.1, 3.01, etc. So what you can do is in order to be able to calculate these decimals, on your calculator what we're going to do is we're going to go to our table setup, which is under second window. And notice under your independent variable you automatically have it set to auto. So what's happening is your calculator is automatically filling in those x values under the table feature. What I'm going to do is go ahead and change it to ask. So now when I change it to ask, I'm going to go back to my table, which is under second graph. Wait a minute. Everything's gone. Because now the calculator is waiting for you to type something in. That's what it means when it changes it to ask. So now if I type in 3.1, Notice, I'm able to get a decimal value out. So I get that 1.3162. Back to second graph. Your table of values. What's going on? Okay, so now 3.01. Notice now at 3.01, I get an output of 1.1. 3.001, guys, shh, I get 1.03. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, I started with 3.1, which is close to 3. But notice now 3.01 is even closer to 3. 3.001 is even closer to 3. So now I'm going to do 3.0001. And notice what's happening with your y values. What integer is this getting really, really close to? It's getting really close to what y value? 1. And eventually I could even type in numbers even closer to 3. 3.0000000001. That's really close to 3, but is it equal to 3? No. no. And notice I'd get a 1. That's the limit. Again, a limit is, again, what's happening when you get really, really close to a number, but it's not equal to it. So any questions on how I found that limit using my table? So now let's take a look at number 5. So again, I'll go back to my y equals to find the limit um, as x approaches 0 from the right of x minus 2 divided by x. So again, guys, be careful with the fraction when you type it in the calculator. 
You can go to alpha y equals, remember, and option number one will give you that fraction bar if you want, or make sure you use your parentheses. So I have x minus 2 divided by x. So if you want to delete out all those values, you can, or if you want to leave them in there, that's up to you. Just hit your delete button if you want to delete the values that you used. So now remember, I want out values that are slightly larger than 0, but not equal to 0. So notice I'm going to choose 0.1. So at 0.1, I have negative 19. That's close to 0, but I can get even closer. So let me look at 0.01. That's negative 199. 0.001, oh, oh, negative 1,999, 0.00001. Oh, 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 so remember, this is scientific notation. This means I have uh, six zeros after negative two. Is it approaching a particular number? Do you see a pattern? No, they're getting really, really small, and they're approaching what? They're approaching negative infinity. We just got done studying rational functions. Graphically, ladies and gentlemen, what's happening at x equals zero? What happens? You have a what? Well, we just got done graphing these. What do we have graphically at x equals zero? Well, what happens? What happens when you have zero in the denominator? What do you have? Undefined. Graphically, what do you have? A vertical asymptote. So remember what happens when you have a vertical asymptote. The graph is going to go up towards pause infinity or go down towards negative infinity. Yes, Favar. How do you hear these values? Just hit delete. Delete. You have to do it for each one. Or you can just type over them. Oh, but now that I enter them, the Y isn't showing up. Anymore. Oh, it's because it's clear here. Yeah, oh, you have to type something else. Oh. Okay, you guys go ahead, ladies and gentlemen, and, um, oh, by the way, what would f of zero be? What's the difference in the notation for limit? What does this f of zero mean? Remind me again, what does this mean? Am I looking at a limit, or does this want the defined value? Defined. defined. So what happens when x is equal to zero? Error. Well, you're not going to write error. It's undefined. It's undefined. Because, again, you'll end up with a zero in the denominator. All right, you guys go ahead and try number six for me. All right, guys, so did you everybody come up with positive infinity in that particular case? All right. So now let's take a look at number seven. So in number seven, notice I did not fill out the x values to plug in. So let's go ahead and talk about what x values we're going to fill in. First of all, which side am I looking at of three? Am I looking to the right or am I going to look to the left? To the left. So when I say to the left, remember, I want um, values that are slightly smaller than three. So I want to pick some x values that are slightly smaller than 3. So how about I start with 2.9? You agree with me that that's close to 3, but it's not equal to 3 and slightly smaller. Can I get closer to 3 without being equal to 3? Yes. I could pick 2.99. You agree with me that I'm close to 3, but still slightly smaller than 3? Yes. Can I get closer? Yes. 2.999. Can I even get closer? Yes. 2.9999. All right. Again, when you're looking at limits from a table, you want to pick values that start off a little close, but then get it closer and closer. So go ahead and fill that table out for me. To a number. What number are you getting really, really close to? Six. six. You're getting really, really close to six. So what's happening is the limit is x approaching three from the left. You're getting really close to six. All right, any questions on that? Now, what does f of 3 asking you for? Is this talking about a limit, or do I want to know when x equals 3, what is the actual defined value? Defined. 
value. The fine value. And what happens when we plug in 3 for x, we're going to get what? 6. No. <laughs> well, what happens when you plug in 3? Look at the function. What do you get on the bottom? You get it undefined. Remember, you can never have 0 in the bottom of a fraction. All right, let's take a look at number 8, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the limit as x approaches 1, and what side am I looking at? I'm looking at the what? Left or right? What side am I looking at, left or right? Look on your paper. It's on the what? It's on the right. Okay? Shh, guys, shh. Again, if it's a plus exponent, you're on the right. If it's a negative exponent, you're on the left. All right, so again, when we talk about from the right, we're looking at x values that are slightly larger. So again, 1.01 is slightly larger than 1, but not equal to 1. You agree with that? So can I even get closer to 1? 1.001 is close to 1, but it's not equal to it. I can get even closer. I can get even closer. But again, the key is, you want to get close to 1 being slightly larger without being equal to 1. There's a difference. So now I'll go ahead and see what this limit's going to be and then tell me what the defined value is going to be. Yes. So guys, what limit did you get really close to here? Shh. What are we getting really, really close to when we find this limit? Should be getting really close to 5. And that's also the same as your defined value. So you do have cases, ladies and gentlemen. Shh. But I, I think you plugged in a 1 by accident. Remember, on your table, you have to plug in a 1. You plug in a 1, you should get a 5. Because it's a one right here. Okay. Oh, isn't it? You know what? That's a typo. That should be a one. Yeah, guys, change that to a one. No wonder. Thank you. Yeah, that's a typo. That should be a one. So, any questions, guys, on how you can use your calculators and fill out a table to help you find the limit? Um, so. One way, ladies and gentlemen, you can find limits is you can do actually without having to fill out a table is you could do direct substitution. The first algebraic way to find a limit is by using direct substitution. So this means that whether you're coming from the right or coming from the left, what you're going to do is you're simply going to plug that particular x value into the equation. So if it's x approaches 1, you're just going to plug in a 1 for x. If you get an answer, you're done. So for example, use direct substitution to find the limit. So again, I want the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. doesn't matter whether I'm from the right or from the left. All I'm going to do is I'm going to let x be equal to 1. I'm going to plug 1 into this expression for x. If I get an answer out, then I'm done. 
What is 1 minus 5? 1 minus 5 is equal to what? Negative 4. You're done. The only time direct substitution will work is when the limits are equal to the defined value. We'll talk about what happens when this doesn't work after spring break. So now, again, when we talk about the limit as x approaches 1 from the left, again, I'm just simply going to set x to be equal to 1. And I'm going to plug 1 in for x. So 3 times 1 to the third plus 4 times 1. So what's that limit going to be? That limit's going to be 7. Like I said, direct substitution only works when the limit is equal to the defined value. But that's the first way we'll always try and find limits algebraically. All right? Look at number 11. The limit as x approaches pi over 4 of sine of x. So again, I'm going to let x be equal to pi over 4. So there's that unit circle that never goes away. So now I want to find the sine of pi over 4. So going back to the unit circle, what is the sine of pi over 4? Square root 2 over 2. Yes, even though the trig part of the course is over, you still need to remember the unit circle. It does come up. Okay? So now um, let's take a look at number 12. So again, I'm going to let x be equal to 0, so I'm going to plug 0 in for x. So 0 squared minus 4 over 0 minus 2. So what's this limit going to be? This is going to be 2. You guys go ahead and do the next two for me on your own. So this is what we should come up with, guys. Hopefully um, you came up with for um, 13, 6, and then 14, 2. So any questions on finding a limit using direct substitution? Graphically, so just a kind of um, more practice, like I said, when we talk about a limit, if f of x get arbitrarily close to your unique number as x approaches c from either side, then the limit as x approaches c is L. Remember, these are y values. We're talking about a limit. We're looking at a particular x value. Your answer is going to be a y value. We're concerning ourselves with that particular y value. Um, so now let's take a look at the graph for part A. So the limit as x approaches negative 1. And again, what does this plus sign mean? Am I looking on the left or am I looking on the right? Right. So again, I want to go to negative 1. So there's where x is equal to negative 1. I want to take my pen, and I'm going to go to the right of negative 1. Trace your graph, and trace it so that you get really, really close to negative 1 without being equal to it. What y value are we approaching? We're approaching the y value of what? 2. Okay. So now let's take a look at b. As x approaches negative 1, and again, you have the negative exponent, what side are you looking at, the left or the right? Looking to the left. So again, I already know where negative 1 is on my x-axis. Take your pen, go to the left of negative 1. Now trace your graph, approach negative 1 from the left. What y value are we getting really, really close to? Negative 2. So now let's talk about the limit as x approaches negative 1. What side am I looking at? When I don't see a plus or a minus on an exponent, what side am I looking at? Am I looking on the right? Am I looking on the left? I'm looking on both sides. Remember, when there is no exponent written, you've got to see what the limit on the left is and the limit on the right. So for this to exist, the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right has to be equal to the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left. Were they the same? No. So we say that this does not exist and we abbreviate this as a DNA. We do not say undefined when we talk about limits because limits are not defined values. We say it does not exist. So in order for this is what we call that two-sided limit. What happens on the left has to be exactly the same as what's happening on the right. And as we saw in Part A and Part B, that was not the case. So let's take a look at D. The limit as X approaches 3. I don't see that plus or minus exponent, so what side am I looking at? 
What side am I looking at here? Both. So let's go to the x-axis and let's find 3. So here is 1, 2, 3. So you've got to look on both sides. So first, let's take a look to the right of 3. So when I look at the limit as I approach 3 from the right, what y value am I getting really close to? I'm getting really close to what y value? I'm getting really close to what? 3. So from the right, it's 3. Now let's look, go to the left of 3. Take your graph and trace it. So what y value are you getting really close to when you go to the left of 3? You're getting really close to what also? So from the left, you're getting really close to what? 3. So then this limit does exist. So the limit as x approaches 3 is just 3. All right? So when, it's, when you don't see that plus or minus, you've got to check both sides and make sure the number is the same. You guys go ahead and try E for me on your own. Negative 5. Did I count right? Let's see. 1, 2, 3. Yeah, negative 5. Okay? So any questions on that one? Let's take a look at the next graph, B. The limit as x approaches 1. What side am I looking at, guys? I'm looking at what? The left. So I'm looking at the left. So here's 1. Again, take your pen. You want to go to the left of 1. Trace your graph until you get really, really close to 1 on the left. So to the left of 1, I'm getting really, really close to what particular y value on the left-hand side? Uh, Negative 6. Part B, the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. So go to the right of 1, trace your graph, until you get really, really close to 1 from the right. What y value are we getting really close to? Negative 4. So we saw what happened on the left and to the right of 1. Now, this is your two-sided limit. You have to check both sides. Does uh, the limit as x approach 1 from both sides exist? No. It's a D and E. Okay? So you guys go ahead and do D and E for me. All right, guys, um, so hopefully you came up with D to be a D and E. How come it doesn't exist in D? It's not the same, exactly. Um, and then for E, we have one. Shh, guys, any questions on finding a limit graphically? All right, you guys now go ahead. Oh, we have to, I'm sorry, this got cut off on the other side. Um, Let's just go ahead and do C. You guys go ahead and try part C for me. Okay. So any questions, first of all, guys? Um, let me just kind of scroll this up. Um, up to E. Any questions on finding any of these limits or finding that F of negative 1? Remember, at X equals negative 1, guys, you're looking for the defined value for part um, F. Again, this open circle is not what it's exactly equal to. That means, and there is no other point uh, at X equals negative 1, so that's why F of negative 1 is undefined. And then F, G, and H. So any questions on reading the graph, finding the limits, or finding the defined value? Yeah, Emma. So for f of negative 3, so when I go to negative 3 on my x-axis, so here's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So at x equals negative 3, I'm trying to find a point on the graph where x is equal to negative 3, which is right here. Remember, this line is consists of a whole bunch of points. So right here at x equals negative 3, I have a point on the line. Yes, it may not be as defined as these bold circles right here, but that is a point on the graph. So the y value of that particular point is 3. Okay? 
So any other questions on C? So let's take a look at D for a minute. So for D, I want to find the limit as X approaches negative 6. And again, I'm looking at both sides. So I've got negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. Well, I know what's happening to the left of negative 6. I know that's going to be negative 2. But is there a part of the graph that's coming from the left? Is there anything happening on the left here? No. no. So this is not good. This is going to be a D and E. If there was another part of the graph to the left, then I would be able to tell. But obviously, there's nothing happening on the left that I know of. So therefore, the two-sided limit does not exist. So let's take a look at B. The limit as X approaches negative 5. And again, I've got to look on both sides. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Here's negative 5. So it, when, when X is approaching negative 5 from both the left and the right, what Y value are we getting really close to? We're getting really close to what? What, net, what Y value are we getting really close to? What's the y value right here? Negative 2. You guys go ahead and do D through H for me. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, you should come up with um, 2 for C, D and E for D, and then uh, for E number 5. So, any questions on C, D, or E? Did I miscount? You have to help me out. I got old eyes here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, I miscounted. Thank you. That is a six. And then F, G, and H, you should have four, four, and zero. So any questions, guys, on finding those limits using a graph? All right. Okay.